faces in new places in the Eastern Conference. Let's recap some of those moves. Dougie Hamilton signing the big ticket. He's the number one defenseman now in Carolina. Alex Ndelkovic, what a run he had in the playoffs for Carolina. Now a member of the Red Wings, Nick Foligno. He goes from Toronto to Boston. Gasperi Kakaniemi, the offer sheet summer it was. He's a hurricane. Ken Atkinson joins the Flyers. And people were asking, now you're netminder up in Toronto. So... Uh, get out the roster sheets for opening night. A lot of faces in new places, which brings us to the Wheel of Expectations. I love it. Digital wheel. <laughs> yeah, the Wheel of Expectations. Nope, no Pat Sajak, unfortunately. <laughs> but we'll hit this button. The wheel will spin. Wherever it lands, we've got to discuss the expectations for the guy in his new barn. Okay? Sounds good. Does that work? Let's, Let's do it. Let's you got to throw in your cents every now and again. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> negative nickels. All right, here we go. The Wheel of Expectations it has been hit. Oh, this thing does work. I wasn't sure if it was going to. What do we got over there? Oh, all right. We'll start with the heat here. The offer sheet man himself, Yasperi Kokniemi. Six million dollar man. Yes, sir. Down in Carolina, probably playing on the wing this year. What do you foreshadow for Kokniemi down there? Is he worth six million dollars? Probably not. But Kokniemi is going to go to a Carolina team that plays really fast. Rod Brindamore, the coach there, knows how to push and play with pace. This is, guys, the third overall pick. Was a healthy scratch last year with Montreal in the finals. But he's got a load of talent, and he's surrounded by a talented team. And most likely will end up on the third line with uh, Jordan Stahl. And Jordan Stahl is a veteran that can really help you along, along, along the way. Kokniemi is a guy, if we take a look at the projected lineups, they're gone in the second line. If he plays with Trocek and Teravine, and that's even better for him. Kakanami, he is speed, third overall pick, talent. The production is going to be there. Not quite $6 million worth, but a good fit for Carolina and their depth. Yeah, that lineup is just full of speed, full of skill. One of the most skilled lineups, I think, in the NHL. And, and you get the right fit, like you said. You get some chemistry on a good line there uh, with those guys, with Trocek, who's got the big shot, loves to, loves to dish it out uh, to both sides. It, it's going to be a tough lineup to beat. Uh, so I like the, their forwards there in Carolina. I love it. I love this segment. Let's go. Oh, oh, <laughs> mixing it up. What do we got? Spin the wheel. Oh, that might not have worked. Oh, there we go. It did. <laughs> might have broken it. What do we got? Did the wheel get smaller? Oh, okay. Ooh, Nothing small about his bank account right now. <laughs> Dougie Hamilton in Jersey Hartsey. What do you think? Yeah, no, sign the big ticket. A lot of expectations for this guy, but this guy can handle it. Dougie uh, can walk that line with the best of him. He's got that seeing eye shot coming through from the point. He's going to uh, dominate that uh, the back end on the power play. He's going to get lots of points. So uh, this guy's got to be prepared to play the 28 to 30 minutes every night there uh, in a devil's uniform, and I believe that he's going to have a great year uh, in Carolina, uh, in Calgary before that he, he, he always has that that big shot he's always making those good first passes out of the zone so uh, you have him in the newly acquired graves as well in that top two pair it's it, it really solidifies the D for me uh, are the Devils going to be a playoff contender I, I don't think so uh, but definitely Dougie, Dougie Hamilton is going to have a heck of a bunch of years there wearing a devil uniform Tom Fitzgerald's done a good job with his team and the big signing in the offseason is going to get Dougie Hamilton he's 6'6 230 pounds yeah, big boy. maybe goes unnoticed but the power play production, 42 points, 10-plus goals, seven straight season. He's a goal scorer from the point. And a lot of those goals, everyone thinks power play. He puts up good numbers at even strength. He's plus 50 in the last two seasons with Carolina. Bond. He's not terrible defensively. Yeah. So the good structure. And then you put, play and pair him with Ryan Graves, one of the most solid, responsible guys. You can really unleash Dougie Hamilton, push a play. This should really help the New Jersey Devils and their offense. Power play was 28th in the NHL last year. That has to go up. And the one main beneficiary of all this, Jack Hughes. Absolutely. you got to figure a player with Dougie Hamilton and Jack Hughes working together, it's going to be poetry in motion. You have the Devil fan base on their feet right now, fired up <laughs> for the start of the year. Here we go. Wheel of expectations. Ooh, here we go. Oh, that music soothing. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, Ooh, we're going that. netminder, Alex Nedeljkovic. Kind of surprising that this guy left or didn't leave, but they didn't re-sign him there in Carolina based on the playoff performance that he had towards the end of the year. Uh, now he's a Red Wing. What do you make of Alex Nedeljkovic? Nedeljkovic, Steve Eisman, you want the best position, the position they need most? Go out and get a quality goaltender, Nedeljkovic. And the sample size was big enough. In my opinion, if you looked at the sample size, what he was able to do with Carolina, and not the biggest goaltender, six feet, 189 pounds, but what he lacks in size, he makes up with athleticism and playing the position with a lot of structure. 
doesn't make a lot of mistakes, makes that first save, and then he's going to be asked a lot in Detroit because they're going to get peppered with shots night in and night out. The save percentage might go down, but he is a quality goaltender. The record, that 1.90 goals against average and the save percentage was number one in the league. Only 23 games, but it continued into the playoffs. The save percentage was 921 in the playoffs. This guy is quality through and through. And then Thomas Grice to help out the veteran, to help him bring along. Now, Delkovic for the Detroit Red Wings, Steve Eiserman, smart move. Should give, and, give him the GM of the year. Yes. Right? Didn't, Didn't give work. up much either. <laughs> yeah, hardly got anything. Yeah. No, Nadal, he can, he can do it all. He gets out there, stops the puck, a good puck handler as well, and, and very athletic, never out of a save. So you want to have that guy, uh, you know, shooting on those guys in practice where they want to get better, where they, they compete, makes all the players shooting at him better as well. So this guy uh, is the real deal, and, and good job for Stevie Y. Bringing this guy in, like you said, not giving up too much, oh, and, and uh, should, should solidify that goaltending for the Detroit Red Wings. All right, the Red Wings certainly are looking to take a step forward uh, this upcoming season. Here we go. Back to the wheel of expectations. <laughs> Where are we going? Where are we going? Oh, Peter Mrazek. Yeah. Honorary members of the goalie union right now. All kinds of goalie talk. Peter Mrazek, the Leafs. You talk about high expectations. Anybody who goes to that market has high expectations. What do you think? Art? Well, just another goaltender from the Carolina Hurricanes departing this summer. I'm not sure why they did it again, but, uh, you know, uh, Sorry, the goaltender. Freddie Anderson not, yeah. not doing his part the last few years in Toronto. Uh, you need a fresh face and, and nothing better than a guy that has the experience of uh, winning a couple rounds in Carolina. He's solid. He's competitive. Uh, and that's what you want in a goaltender. So this is, it's going to be different seeing him in blue other than red, uh, you know, in his career. So uh, expect the guys in front of him to have a little extra motivation to play for the new guy in that. Uh, uh, sometimes it does get a little stale as the goaltender. You, you lose a, a playoff round. You lose another one. That you're expected to be this big powerhouse in the East. So you bring in this guy, Peter Mrazek, uh, combined with Jack Campbell. It's a pretty good one-two punch there. Jack Campbell emerged. The numbers were outrageous for him with the Maple Leafs. NHL records, right? 11 in a row? <laughs> you look at the Leafs record. When they got outshot, they were so much better mm. when they outshot the opponent. Why is that? Their goaltenders seem to thrive on more workload, yeah. especially Jack Campbell. Peter Mrazek, what uh, my expectations are for him, just a solid backup guy. I look around probably 65 games I'm looking at for Jack Campbell if he stays healthy. So what's that mean for Mrazek? 25 or so, mm -hmm. 25 and change for him. He can come in there and give you 25 games. Quality goaltender, if Jack Campbell, for some reason, goes down, has a slump, Mrazek can come in and be that depth goaltender. So they have a good one-two punch in net, but the disparity still leans for Jack Campbell and the emergence. He's waited a long time. Jack Campbell was a former really high 10th yeah, overall pick for the Los Angeles Kings. He's waited a long time for this, and he's in a hot pressure market. So I hope the best for him, but a backup Mike Mrazek should help a lot. All right, it's never about the regular season up there in Toronto. It's no. what can you do come playoff time. And look at what they've done come playoff time the last four seasons. Trying to win a playoff round for the first time since 2004. Is this year, Hartsy, that they finally get over that hump? Well, they need to, or something's going to happen there. Uh, a lot of people are looking at these guys saying, you got to get to the finals. you got to get to the Eastern Conference yeah. finals, and, and they need to. All right, we'll see how it plays out. You want to give this one a shot? Hold on. Wait, wait. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, timing, no, wait. timing is everything okay. on this show. We have expectations. <laughs> we got now you can hit it. We got it. Oh, you might have broken it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see. How many faces left? Oh, familiar face for you, Hartsey. Let's talk to you. Talk about your former teammates. Uh, change of scenery for him. He goes to Philadelphia. High expectations there. What do you make of Cam Atkinson? This guy loves to score goals. He's got the wheels. He's a great penalty killer, which the Philadelphia Flyers needed. And here's a couple looks of his goals. He, he always seems to find those areas where there's no defenders around to put those pucks in the empty net. I've seen it many, many times playing with Cam. Uh, he's just a beetler out there. Uh, he's got a great shot, and goal scorers seem to find the way in the back of the net. He's shooting it from the hash marks on the boards, uh, on the power play. It ends up going off Dougie Hamilton, who we just talked about, in uh, off the post and in. So goal scorers. Tortorella loved him. Mm. But past Couturier there, that's a donut line. Our donut team. Not a lot of centers. Okay. To go, if you get past Broussard, Lawton, Thompson, I have concern down the middle. Atkinson will score goals, it, even without... If he doesn't have a quality centerman, he should help elevate the play of Broussard and Farabee. Cam Atkinson is that good that he does help the people around him. Yep. He does elevate him. That is a real compliment for a player. But down the middle in Philadelphia, 
that it does get a little weak and it gets a little thin. But Cam Atkinson, compared to Voracek, different type players. But Cam Atkinson, as you showed in those clips, yep. has a real nifty scoring touch. It goes unrecognized at times. And he's got that. And Philadelphia, correct me if I'm wrong, the identity, the old Broad Street bully, but they've always had that identity as a strong, tough, hard-to-play-against team. They've kind of gotten away from that. Bringing Cam Atkinson back brings a little bit more of that Philadelphia Flyer identity. Yeah, Cam's very relentless on pucks all the time. He's working so hard on the back check, on the fore, uh, on the fore check. Uh, he's always around that puck. And uh, the one guy that was missing up the middle there was Kevin Hayes, a little bit of injury. He had that yep. surgery a couple weeks ago. So he definitely does uh, bring some stable uh, stability to that uh, the center ice position. But uh, bringing in a lot of guys, uh, changing that whole dressing yeah. room around. So it's going to bring some new energy, uh, just some new excitement to the dressing room. No, nothing's given in, in A.V.'s dressing room. He wants he wants accountability. He wants guys to work. So hopefully that's their identity this year and they can, uh, you know, make a little run. Elaine Vigneault, sink or swim. Yep. yep. It's, it, he's on the hot seat. All right. High expectations last year didn't quite pan out the way they hoped in the city of brotherly love. We'll see what they have in store for the upcoming season.